Okay, can can everybody see the the uh, text editor? Affirmative. With a file called showend.f. Is that okay? So the, this is um, this is a pair of words that I came up with a few years back. I don't know when exactly, um, because I got very tired of trying to type in help screens because uh, when, when I'm doing some little application <clears throat> and I want to have some some sort of help screen I'll scroll down quickly to the help screen so you can see what sort of thing I'm talking about so this is this is the test of the show help functionality so what I used to do was I used to type in CR I'll actually do it here like so Okay, so if I wanted a help screen to display something like this, the first line I would do like this, then I would put a CR on the next line and a dot quote and a quote at the end. And you have to go through and you end up, if I get rid of that for a second, you can see the colouring is more accurate now. So it, it was a pain to have to write a carriage uh, return for every line. And um, <clears throat> so anyway, I came up with this idea. Why can't I create a word that... Um, um, well, and I've given it the name show open curly bracket and everything that you type after it until the terminating word end close curly, curly bracket simply gets uh, typed out. So what this means, if I run this, if I just recompile it, make sure I'm up to date with everything. Uh, like so. So if I do that. What you see is the uh, well. The, the, these lines here are, are created by um, a little program that just outputs a whole lot of asterisks and your text and does some calculations. That's quite useful to mark some kind of header. We and see then, only the editor. Oh, okay. I need to change the window then to the fourth thing. Okay. Uh, you uh, can do that, or you can share your whole, whole screen, screen. Whatever is easier for you. Okay, but however I do it, I have to stop sharing it and then start again. So I share Correct. that entire screen. Okay, entire screen. Share. <clears throat> All right, okay, we're getting an infinite uh, feedback there. Right, can you now see uh, this? Right, it's, is it in our black and white Swiftforth screen visible? Yes. Oh, goodness me! Right. Okay. Yes. So if I if I do um, this again, the bit you didn't see, like so, then the function that I've just uh, compiled here, when run, simply outputs whatever text you had in your source code, like so. <clears throat> so uh, it's, presumably it's now possible to go back here. So it, what you can do is is add something here, okay, and then. When you recompile it again, you see that it's adds something here. So this uh, this avoids uh, an awful lot of fiddly kind of uh, words that you, you don't want to write. Carriage return dot quote and then a quote at the end. And then and if you the mapping between the um, let's go back to the code thing between um, what you type if you've got a, a conventional CR dot quote type thing and what you see there is not easy to see sometimes because if I okay let's let me do a little chunk of conventional help screen yeah all right nice so and then you have to do a blank line then you have to do uh, line one 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 whatever it is on there and then CR CR and if you happen to have put um, the wrong number of CRs, it, it's just a pain. Whereas with this, what you see here is what, what you get. You see this is the source code here. And what you see on the when it r runs has the same pattern. So anyway, it's just um, much easier to organize. OK, uh, th that was the first part. Have I got time to, to go on to the show plus end? Yes, yeah. you have. Okay. I'm especially curious okay, how so... you put variables in there and stuff like this. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, right. This is this is actually fairly new. Um, I, 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 as I said, I had the 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 show end pair for ages, and it's just helpful. Then I thought to myself, 
um, <clears throat> I can actually process uh, the lines as I output them. So I can change text as I output it. And uh, OK, let me scroll down. You're hopefully seeing the text again. Um, right. Th this, this code actually got pretty complicated quite quickly. But it's complicated in an easy sort of way, because there's just lots of it. Um, let me first go to the, the show plus open curly bracket word. It's, obviously, it's like show open curly bracket but with extra features. And the extra feature is that, oh, so I haven't explained how it works yet, but maybe I'll do that later. <laughs> um, in you define this word, um, replace x, x, y, y, z, z, or z, z. And it's either postponed in if you're in compiling state, or it's uh, interpreted immediately uh, if you're in interpret state. And that function, that word, here we go. Right, what it does is it gets uh, the next string from a list. So it's a bit hard to go through this so quickly. Um, I'm trying to hurry. But the principle is simply that it, it searches in your source file, in the text you've typed in that you want to display when the word is executed. It searches for keywords. And I, I use these bar xxxxx bar and the same with y and so on. So every time it reads in a line, because this, this functionality works line by line, it's nice and easy. <clears throat> It um, it calls this replace, and it looks for the for the the keywords in there. So if I skip through to an example, I think it becomes much clearer. Uh, all right, here we go. So this uh, unfortunately, I'm uh, usually I have I'm working in C or C plus plus or something, and it's 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 very wonderful. C is a very capable, mature language. Let's leave it at that. And um, but sometimes I have to do awful things like <clears throat> outputting you know, a file that has uh, lots of switch statements uh, that on case x um, has to do uh, something to variable y. And so it's, uh, and then it's, uh, there's some comment line at the end. So what's, what has to happen here is that I provide a list. Every time I call the function get xxxxx, it gives me the next item in a list. Let me go to that. So this is this one. OK, so what is this doing? So, OK, so what this one is doing is it gets the next simple number. And that one, there's a list of things here. So I'm trying to create um, a C file actually from an ASN1 schema file. It's um, uh, anyway, so I uh, create this um, list here. So you get hex one, twelve, one, two, three, and so on. All these things. So for each of these in here, it walks through this thing here. So for the first one, this will have a value of zero, and then this one will have a value of uh, one, and this will have a value of twelve, and this is what one, two, three, and so on. And uh, you then have a variable name, and that's of course get y y y string. So you can invent this as you go. This is just, you, you just have to type it and it will do it. So this is a variable name from list, which name do I want? Get, calls get name from list. This goes to a list of names here, uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry, and so on. So this is all um, straightforward. And you can do this in C, you can do it in fourth. It doesn't require any fancy fourth features. It's, uh, it's just give me the next name from a list and give me the next number from a, 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 a list. So th these these things get get y's get x's get y get z. They um, they have a default action and then you can override what the action is. This is I suppose that's a that's slightly fancy feature using uh, defer. But so w when you call this, I haven't actually tried running this. I've no idea what it's going to do. Probably crash. Oh, there you go. Right. So now you can see that the value it got here, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, et cetera. And then it's filled in the names from the list, invalid, Tom, Dick, and Harry. And then it, it creates a um, comment here. I mean, it happens to look like the variable in this case. So this is, um, this is a very, very powerful technique. 
um, <laughs> because it's something that I don't think is easy to do any other way. Um, because I'm playing with the time at which I'm compiling things and the time at which I'm running the code that compiles it. And in the actual usage, the, the, the thing I'm actually doing, I have a, an enormous ASN1 file, or a pair of them. Um, these are about uh, six or 800 lines long. <clears throat> and I'm trying to create an enormous um, C header file, which does certain things to certain values based on these inputs. So everything that, that you use that, that is you feed into this, uh, the get XXX and the get YYY and the get ZZZ comes from a list that was created by a fourth program that creates a file with a list in it. Um, and so I can I end up creating a file which is, I don't know, maybe six to 800 lines long, which is perfectly formed, perfectly executable C that is specifically set up for, with the inputs that it needs to have. Now, I'm sure there are other ways of doing this. I'm sure people can do this in, in Perl if they wanted to, or said or awk or what, what, any one of these things, Python, certainly. But if I can uh, echo the, the comments, I think it was Philip, was it? And I think um, Peter both came up with the same kind of concept that you you insert a test in your system. So um, the development process is that you start off w without anything that works. So for example, how do I find out that this order, this uh, list here, uh, that number one here is actually called Tom? And the answer is, I have no idea. So what I do is I say, um, if, if I don't know, OK, this is the output. In the code, let's go back to the code here, um, it's using this list here. So uh, where does this come from? This comes from a fourth program that parses an ASN1 file, and it extracts all the names from that file. And in the process of extracting those names, it also extracts the um, the code for that name corresponding to it. So there's, there's, there's a sequence of compilation. Uh, first, if I go back even, even further, further I, I first uh, extract text from a PDF file, which is the ASN1 schema file. And I then have a fourth program that parses that text file to extract only the bits that I need. And in this case, because it's a Chinese project, I actually remove all the Chinese from it because I'm not interested in it. I don't read Chinese. And then I take the, the ASN1 text files with the parts that I want from the original schema ASN1 file. And I, uh, no, hang on, ASN1 file. But then I extract a list of attribute names schema describes a JSON file. And, uh, and so these are the, are the attribute names. And these values are actually a combination of the, uh, the values. So but there's actually a stack involved, but I don't think I've got time to go into all that. Um, so the, the really neat thing here is that, that I'm, I feel I'm really playing with the the, the different times in the sense of you've got um, the design time, you've got uh, edit time, compile time, run, run time. So they're, they're the four normal ones. But what I've got here is, is, is these are each split in a very fractal sort of way. So there's a time when I compile <clears throat> my program that's parsing the ASN1 files into the attribute names and so on. And then if that isn't working, it gives up an, an, an error. It, it calls throw, it prints out some little text that says, I don't know what this, this word means. I don't know who Tom is. So I think, so then I have to go and read back in the original schema file, well, who's Tom and what value is he supposed to have and why is it wrong? And I fix it and I, I rerun that and I eventually end up with a complete list of attribute names. Then I take that list of attribute names and I then recompile this code, which says, well, what do I want to do 
these attribute names is I want, you know, some C code that looks like this with, with this value and this, you know, his Tom and so on. And so again, in the, the process of doing that, the output is probably not right. And it, it stops and it halts. And it's like everything here is a test. And the, the form of the test here is, do I know what a particular name or value is? There's something here that needs to to correlate a, 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 um, an ID with a name. And maybe I've not got that name entered into my attribute list yet. So there's a feedback loop that goes round and round in the first part of the process to create the, the uh, ASN1 files in the form I need them. And then there's a feedback loop that uses the output of that, the attribute names, to create the C code. And so it goes round and round and round. And I find myself uh, jumping from, from one part of the right at the input side to the output side. And uh, the final step is, is actually a batch file that copies the resultant C file, a C, C header file. Actually, there's also a C code file as well. It copies it into the, the Visual Studio Code, excuse me, um, environment where it's compiled or not. So in that part of the process, perhaps it's got some C code in here where it's actually created the, the, the word Tom here for this variable. <clears throat> and something in the system is not right. And I don't have a variable called the Tom underscore index. So I then go right back to the beginning and say, well, why haven't I got that? Is it in my attribute name list? And you know, perhaps it's not. So I then go back to the ASN one parser and say, well, is it in the in the is it in the original PDF file? Oh, yes, it is. Has it made it into my subset of that file? Oh no, so I have to fix that part. So there's like a loop within a loop, and I jump back right to the beginning or a search for for where the uh, which link in the chain went wrong. Okay, I think that's it. Um, but these everything in this is, is in it, each element of it is very easy. But once you start to um, have a, uh, an environment where, where there's a test that uh, is supposed to do something and it tells you very clearly if it can't, then you fix it. You fix it, you fix it, and you go around the next loop and fix that and round and round and round. And it's, it's wonderfully powerful. So uh, it actually is at the point now where um, I created a little exe file and you, you feed it an input file uh, and you press one. And it runs through and it creates uh, two two files, one C, C code file, one C header file, both hundreds of lines long, which map one to one with the original Chinese uh, PDF file, I hope. It seems to anyway, it seems to work. But it's very hard to prove it's right. I mean, the code compiles and every bit of it looks right. But this technique is so much more powerful than, than me sitting down and trying to read a 3,200 line PDF file and see w whether my C code is, is correct. Okay, any, any questions? Thank you very much, Howard. If there's any questions in the chat, please ask them now. Um, any questions in here, please raise your hand. Maybe I'll point out in the meantime, Howard, there is a subset of this being solved in C with header macros, and it's in heavy use by the uh, people who especially develop uh, games with C. So there's a GDC okay. impromptu talk after all, talking about a very similar uh, problem you're having, but it's a subset of your problem. I might link you to it. Okay, uh, okay great. Has that's, that's very interesting. Like everything else, uh, if you're trying, if you're attacking a problem, somebody has almost certainly been there b before. It's just, it's yeah, yeah, it, it's just because you are in C, the, the preprocessor can do some things for you as well <coughs> there. Okay, but uh, yes. Glyn has had his hand up. Please, uh, Glyn, take it away. Uh, yeah, so I was going to, my observation was going to be related to that. It sounds like you're basically using fourth as a, uh, as a C preprocessor on steroids. <laughs> yes, that's a, well, that's one way of putting it. Or, or, or uh, it's a set of C, C preprocessors that are each doing different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the, the yeah. programmability and extensibility of fourth gives you that flexibility, which you wouldn't yes. have with the standard C preprocessor. Yeah. Well, you probably could do all of this with a C preprocessor, but it's beyond but my... But it would be ugly. ugly. <laughs> it would be very ugly. It'd be unreadable. And it, yeah. it doesn't give you the immediate feedback when something goes wrong. Yeah. 
Okay, are there any further questions? Well, I just want to add maybe yes. then uh, the game programmers are also using this because they are uh, one of them said, if I ever see you <coughs> comparing strings against each other in the game loop, you're getting fired on the spot. <laughs> so obviously yes. your system would always only compare indices. That's yes. what is much, nice, much nicer. Uh, uh, and some, some other point I would say, given that I already had the original show end pair and I was already using that to, to create a little help screen for the application that uh, I was, um, had created. Um, the extension to do these other things took maybe a few days. Well, I have I to think, yeah. I have to say, I have a really strong interest in, in these things. Actually, they are called template strings in, in some languages. Mm -hmm. And in JavaScript, yeah. for example, you, you do them with a backtick. And then you also have the option of putting uh, arbitrary code in the middle. And the one thing I thought you should solve, which none of the other languages, neither a here document in bash nor a JavaScript template, they never do the indentation right. Because if you have a template string, you always have to start at the very left. I also saw you doing that. Aren't you upset by that? I guess not because force definitions are, are, are smaller uh, by, by uh, nature, right? So the fourth, are, are you, are you um, so if you if you if you're mean? opening show and you have a curly brace and your yes. indentation level is like four spaces in, you then start the next line at the very left, right? You don't start it four spaces in. No, not at all. Yes, uh, that's why depends. I'm asking. Uh, oh, yeah, did you yeah. did you ever uh, consider no, it <laughs> would make the syntax look nicer <laughs> if you would do that, or don't you care about that? Sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm not. I'm not clear which screen or which source file you're talking about. Uh, uh, so you just like showed a, a, sh a source file before, uh, which which had yeah. this uh, where you were. Then uh, let, let me see. Maybe it was one of the earlier ones. Maybe the first one even, where you were showing uh, show for the first time. Oh yeah, the, the one show for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. R right here, your indentation level of show in line 143 is four characters. And then in line 145, your indentation level jumps back to zero. This is something that upsets me and no language can oh. deal with. So I was just wondering, so do we, does it also... Sorry. No, no, no. But, right? it, but if you do that, obviously, <laughs> you would then also output the four spaces in the beginning. Or do you remove them? Uh, what, uh, w with this uh, this uh, word, show, and until yeah. end, it simply outputs whatever you see here. So yeah, okay, so, that's what I was asking. I think you could uh, improve this system, which every other language has done wrong, in my opinion. That is, I, I'm just cherry picking here. Okay. Oh no, no, but <laughs> don't, I, don't take I'm me really too seriously, to, please. No, I um, okay. So I've just changed the the input source code. Where is it? Uh, Hold on, I'll just make, make give you back the uh, stage. Uh, sorry, I'm in the, I'm in the wrong Swift for things. Don't worry. This one, yeah. Try again. To do that, you need to know the indent level of the show brace word. Exactly. Which, um, mm -hmm. yes. which is actually at the fourth compiler level, not at the fourth runtime level. Well, you could just take the first uh, line <laughs> as the indentation and then subtract from that. <clears throat> That's true for, you know, normally you want to start at the same indentation level and then you want to only increase. I, I, I just really thought that would you be... You need to know what the indentation level is. So. Yeah, I okay, guess but... that... That's a small is... advantage to the CR dot quote thing, whereas it, it, yes. it automatically gets indented along with the yes, rest of the code. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I have in, in, in my fourth system, in the support words, I've, actually, I, I just closed the window that was doing that. Let me just do this. Um, have a little word, CR underscore. Oh, this is this is somewhat more complicated than I was expecting. How's <laughs> <laughs> okay? But uh, okay, this is part of the actual code that I'm using to parse these uh, JSON schema files. So I, I would happily show you all this, but I'm not sure the company I'm working for really wants it to go public in that way. But I don't think they can complain about this the tiny little bits of code here. But um, the I have uh, something that calculates what indent line you're on. So as it goes through the file it looks on each line for a for a, an open curly bracket or a closed curly bracket 
has an indent level there. And then all you do is you, you, you have a, a function, you, you have a word called not leading, which is like not trailing, but removes leading white space. And then I have a CR. This is, this is not the version I wanted, actually. Give me a second, I'll find it. Um, probably in here, under support. Um, it used to be called CR plus. I'm not sure whether it's, and I changed it to CR underscore for some reason. There ah, we go. This is this is this is the code I was thinking of. That that was a, a specific implementation of that. Mm -hmm. So this is something called CR indent. You've got um, a constant that says what you want to do for each uh, extra indent level, and you have a variable of indent. Uh, this is this is something else. Uh, it just ignore that. That was to give an extra indent for certain situations, and you just uh, take that number of indent spaces and do spaces after your original carriage return. So that's how I output things correctly formatted. In, in for fourth indent it's usually three and in C it's usually four at the moment. I don't know why. Um, so one of the one of the things I I, I spewed out as, as a kind of a byproduct of this process was the the conversion of the ASN1 files, some ambulance going by, um, was, um, okay, it copied directly from the original Chinese schema file. And uh, so it's near enough. I mean, I don't care about indentation, but one of the things I thought, okay, I can, I can simply, I know what the indent level is at each line. So I will simply remove all, all the leading spaces and uh, do a carriage return and put it in the correct amount. So I, I, I also spew out the format corrected versions of these ASN1 files. But I, I don't want to edit them <clears throat> because I want to feed back to the Chinese c government. Please, can you get the indentation right in your file eventually? Sure. That ever happens. Thanks for pointing so, that out. Yeah. So uh, Rick Riccalino in the meantime said that actually Ruby is also a language which can do here docs which are indented. I did not know that. Thanks for mentioning that. And as Strobe said, your system, of course, is also uh, quite interesting for generating HTML. But I would even go on. It, it's just really useful oh, for yes. a lot of templating. I used, I've used it for HTML. Ah, I, see, I, there uh, you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, well, H HTML is also very easy because you've got the replace function, which is at the heart of this. Where's the mm -hmm. place? I think I've got a version replace, replace, replace. Yeah, okay. So so th these things here, because you can have more than one XXX on a line, I, I'm saying I'm only going to deal with up to five on a line. So I simply go, go through and I say, um, I'm going to replace XXX by whatever the current thing is that XXX is giving me. And I go around f f five times. Now, if you, <clears throat> it's incredibly easy to con to convert something, uh, some some text in one format. Like um, I've, I've got c color codes here that, like blue, red, green, and so on. So you could convert that to a, an op open, what do you call it, um, the HTML tag format, and uh, use a CSS type. Um, schema they call that as well um, to do that so yeah for outputting HTML it's also extremely useful okay thank you and uh, might I also be shamelessly plugging I also did a talk uh, f uh, f many years ago about uh, having an, a templating engine which is called Fern maybe you want to check this out Astrobe it's somewhere in the interwebs yeah. in the meantime okay. there is Philip who has also raised his hand please Philip go ahead yeah, I just wanted um, on the on the note of the this the advantage of uh, the CR and uh, dot quote approach. Um, uh, your wish for indented here documents basically is a, is a playing a balance between the function as such being nicely indented and on the other hand seeing exactly how far is what you're printing indented. So having having something like a, a distinguishing leading uh, character or string of leading characters, like I don't know four four dots or six dots, depending on how far you're, you're indented, mm -hmm. might help solve both. That you see, okay, this is my my indentation 
curve of my function at the same time uh, I see exactly how many spaces, uh, how many indentations are actually printed. Yes, uh, that, well, that's absolutely no problem. You simply change the, um, where is it, this one here to instead of indent spaces, indent dots. So query do, uh, zero query do uh, um, 2e emit loop there in that, that place, and that would be. That yeah, I figured that implementation-wise, that would be super easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think the, the the thing that 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 I learned from this is it's the the speed with which you can t turn around things and find out what's wrong. Because, as, as I said, ultimately the thing is producing C code, and if the compiler says I don't know what this means, you you do a search for it. You say, well, it should be there because it's it's in some it's in a such such a file, and you can so quickly go back and trace uh, from the like the the trail of files that it outputs, because every every one of these every part of the process produces some sort of file. So is the is the attribute name in that file uh, list? And if it's not, then did the the ASN one parser find it, and if not, why not? And uh, and then you find out that, that there's a typo in the ASN one file that meant that it. Uh, uh, what was it? There was there's one I found by this. There was there was long with with a capital G, uh, L O N lowercase and a capital G at one point, and things like that. Um, and it's it gets horrendously c complicated, but it somehow uh, it fights in a in an equal way to the horrendous complexity of what you're feeding into it because ASN1 um, is a nightmare I mean it, it, I honestly I think it was designed with the intention of being as hard to create to convert an ASN1 format schema file into C code as possible I mean, everything comes in the the wrong order it's uh, or it, <laughs> there may not be any order it uh, defines a structure using um, uh, ints and uh, octet strings and such like, which are not defined until further down. Okay, other languages like C are, are quite used to having things like this, but in fourth, it makes it harder, maybe. Anyway, it's, it was it was great fun doing this, and I now feel uh, secure that whatever PDF files I get thrown at that define schemas that I'm supposed to write C code for, then I will be able to handle it very easily. Any other questions? Okay, there are no more questions on Twitch. Are there any questions in Big Blue Button for us, or are we done with Howard's talk? Well, I guess there's nothing coming up. Howard, thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. Thank you.